Well, it is a really, really nice Saturday morning, and my wife and kids are traveling for most of the day, so I'm out here trying to get some work done on the boat, and so I believe the last thing I showed on the heads was um, they were fully disassembled, and I went to go put on my valve stem seals under the spring here, and it didn't even come close to working. They weren't, uh, these aren't the right size. And so, me being a dummy, I figured out what I did. So basically, I pulled one of the old ones off and then I took it and measured it. Measured the ID with a caliper. Well, that was obviously the wrong thing to do because the seals actually like kind of pinch on the guide. They actually like grip on the guide there. So when I pulled it off, it shrunk a little bit. So then it shrunk right to a perfect half inch. And so I thought, oh yeah, I'll order half inch ID valve stem seals. Well, no, that's just not right. So um, anyway, then I spent like probably a week just looking for the right seal to go in there without any machining or whatever, any type of anything. And uh, what they do make is like an umbrella style, um, which I do have some of those laying around. I might show them later. But basically, they don't, it's not a positive. This is a, a positive type seal because this white part, the inside grips onto the guide and it actually holds. And you can see like that spring clip right there. That actually provides the, the spring and, the, and the, the tightness, you know, so to speak. So the valve moves in and out through that seal. Whereas an umbrella seal, um, my understanding is that it doesn't really grip to the guide at all. It just kind of like hangs over the guide. So I don't know, those are like a harder plastic. And that just seemed really chintzy, especially knowing that this all was all tore up anyway in that area. So um, anyway, basically after talking to the machine shop, they pretty much don't install the umbrella style anymore. And basically if they ever do anything... They take a cutter, it's kind of like a hole saw, but anyway, if I'd pull the spring off, pull the retainer and the keepers out or whatever it is, and then, so it was just the, and the valve's gone too, and just the guide is left, it basically machines the outside, it like turns down the outside of the, um, the guide, and it uses the guide as like a, well, a guide, frankly, and keeps it straight, so it like runs down the bore of that hole. And uh, that machines them down to, I think it's 530, um, 530 thousandths. And so the reason that they do that, I was told, is because when these heads were originally made, the guide hole and the, out, the OD of the guide are not perfectly concentric, meaning like there's a little bit oval, not oval, it's a little bit off on its true position on its center to center they're not they're not lined up so by remachining the out, outer diameter of the guide by and using the ID of the guide as the guide okay that's just the worst way of saying that but that's what it is that allows those to both be concentric and so then they put these new seals on and obviously seal technology has gotten better throughout the years and whatnot so in the materials so that's what's in here and I didn't even end up finding the seals I ended up just taking it to the machine shop because they were like yeah we'll charge you 60 bucks to do both heads well you can't even buy the tool for 60 bucks so I'm like done deal you know so anyway I took it in and uh, had them check everything else over so they vacuum checked both heads even though I'd kind of already done that but whatever and then also they milled you can see they milled down, you can see the kind of the, the cross hatching marks. They milled down the heads. So one of them has four thousandths taken off of them and off of it, and one of them has six thousandths taken off it, which I mean is not nothing. Um so anyway, those should be nice, straight, and true now. And then he assembled the heads too, which I mean that's fine, whatever. I was gonna do that, but it saved me some time anyway. 
So um, basically to assemble those heads would be the um, exact opposite procedure of what I used, did before with the little tool that goes down here and, and presses on the top of the um, valve stem. So anyway, they look great. The only other thing that I changed is um, uh, kind of a guy that is definitely advising me and I, I really value his opinion um, told me to put Z28 valve springs on there. So I looked these up and apparently these are it. And I don't know if the coil diameter is a little better or the spring pressure is better or whatever it is, but supposedly that's good to make the uh, make it handle sustained RPM a little better. So that's what we got set up and I'm stoked to get those put on. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get to wrenching. All right, well, I've been working on this for a little while. Got these pretty well cleaned up, rinsed off and everything. So I got the rings stripped off of them. And now I was noticing down, down like in there in the oil groove, you can actually see some chunks of bowl stuck under there. So um, I was gonna like probably leave it honestly but uh, they make a tool that I got at Napa really quick. I'm going to try it out to kind of clean those out other than like a little screwdriver, which is basically the only thing I could have used. So it is a uh, piston groove cleaner by Evercraft. There's the part number. So I'm going to try it out. It has a bunch of different little pieces there and basically should work like that so I'll try that out and then I got a ring opener because I just like peeled them off of what was on there but this is a, the actual tool to do that it's probably a super crappy one and then I got one of these which also is probably super crappy but two and an eight to five inches so that should work there's the part number so um, that should work for about everything that I'm gonna use it for so I can't imagine ever having larger than a five inch piston. So anyway, we'll try this stuff out, see how it goes. All right, well, I was playing with this tool for a minute and I'm not actually sure it's set up correctly here, but this is how it works. So you just open this and that, that opens the overall jaws and it, it can, so it can clamp down, but there's like a beveled edge here and a non beveled edge. So honestly, I don't really know, frankly, how it works. But what it is working, or what it is doing, is you take this and you put it in the top groove and the top groove there, and then you set that back in. So you see how it's like sprung in there? And then, one of the ways, this way, if you spin it, it'll, whoops. If you spin it, it'll actually somewhat clean that out of there and I mean whether this is the right way or the wrong way or whatever it doesn't really matter because I see a bunch of crap falling out and it's not aluminum chips so that's good so anyway now that groove is nice and clean that top groove and you'll find a bunch of junk on the end of this guy so same deal I'm gonna come and put it on the second groove So yeah, I mean, the first one had quite a bit more and I could actually see it on the ground was falling out. So I'm probably going to end up redoing, re-rinsing those. But then what you want to do at some point is switch this tip. You can back this off and re-key it off of this for the fatter oil groove, oil ring groove. And so that'll get us um, cleaned up on that groove too. So I don't know, is it useful yes is it really that good I don't know but it's better than st sitting there picking with a screwdriver or something like that so and then I'm gonna go around the outside here and make sure we didn't cause any marring or anything but these are reasonably smooth but I'll, I'll go and make sure there's no burrs or anything hanging off of those so anyway, I'm gonna go finish up the rest of this group and uh, continue on well I got the uh, top two 
rings done here and here. So now I'm moving down to the oil ring. And so I changed out the bit on the tool to the largest one. So again, I'm going to take this guy, put it on here quick. Okay. So now you can see it's riding in that groove. And now um, I'm just going to do this over top of I'm going to do this over the top of that towel there so you can see if anything comes out. Doesn't look like much was even in this one, honestly. Wasn't too bad. I should have found a really bad one first. There you go. So if you see, see all those pieces that have come out there, all those little chunks of black carbon, that's what's coming out. So, um, not a bad deal. It only takes a couple minutes to do this. With this tool is not so bad. And the tool is like cheap. It was like 15 bucks maybe or something. So anyway, I'm going to finish up doing the other, what, six now? And uh, just while you're doing this, try and turn the, you know, if you can see the difference between this rod and this rod, this is like the back side versus the front side or whatever. So I just flip them over every time I do something to them so I know where I'm at. I don't forget if I'm on the third one, I don't go to the fifth one, you know what I mean? Skip one and that would suck. So anyway, I'm going to finish these out. up going through these pistons one more time with uh, that sweet tool and uh, anyway end up doing that once more just to be sure that those are all as clean as I can get them so I did that and then I cleaned off the crank which had been sitting for some time so I got that thing all clean the heads are really good. Those came from the machine shop. And then the block, um, I sprayed down with basically brake clean and sprayed out every little, you know, you want to get into those lifter bores, you want to get into the cam bearings, you know, and make sure everything's nice and clean. So, did that. Um, it should be fairly well degreased at this point. There's still some spots, but I think that's the paint. It looks like it's oily, but it's just the paint was a little glossy there. It doesn't even, there's nothing on it. So kind of is one of those deals where it's hard to stop cleaning it, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is good. Okay, so I got the top ring inserted into the bore, and you can see the gap up there. And it's not straight right now, so to square this up, I'm going to take this piston and just push it evenly down into the hole see how it's like even there and then pull that out and take a look right there we have our end gap so I can take a feeler gauge and find which one fits it's between 20 and 22 thousandths here because my the 20 will go barely and 22 won't 22 gets hung up in there you can see there gets hung up so um, honestly I'm definitely not going to make it bigger so uh, I'm just going to run run like that so that's the top ring, and I'm going to go through and check on all the other ones and make sure it's it's in within spec, but honestly, I don't even know what the spec is. It looks like, whoops, blocking the camera. It looks like compression ring, gap, 10 to 20 thousandths, so it looks like we're already basically maxed out. Um, I don't really care that it's 
too big. I just don't want to be too small. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm just going to make sure those are all in the ballpark. There's really nothing I can do about it. It's kind of like a purchased kit, but uh, going to take a look and see.